Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's talk a little bit about GPT-3 AI and how did we implement this on CodeDAM and how you can do that as well. Now, let me walk you through what this whole technology is, why you should care and how does it work on CodeDAM. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So first things first, you see that there is a website called chat.openai.com slash chat, which is like a GPT 3.5 version available for you for free, right? So you can say, hey, chat GPT 3, can you tell me how to add two numbers in JavaScript? and see like how open-ended I have asked this question, right? And it can give me an output based on that. So it's, it's super efficient in code in a lot of ways. It's super efficient in, you know, if you tell it, hey, can you tell me a bit about biggest incident in Indian history? I don't know like whatever that means but you can tell that you know it's 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 super intelligent super smart it can spit out information in geography uh, history computer science coding everything because this model has been trained in that way the underlying technology for this model is available now what that technology is if we take a look at the documentation so it would be beta.openai let's see so you see if you take a look at text davinci 003 model this is the model which we also use at codedam in order to support the live chat thing the live chat functionality so let's say if i am taking a full stack web development course if i let's say start with internet fundamentals i try this course for free i resume this course as someone who is completing this course let me just go back to the first or you know the first couple of videos first one two videos let's say i'm learning about dns right i'm in the middle of things and i'm learning about dns i can instantly go ahead and ask this particular ai which we have on the website instant help right so this particular ai this is basically the same ai as chat gpt3 is using right the only difference is that the way we send this conversation to the ai is in a way that we have programmed this ai to be by default into coding mode right like you saw that, you know, it, it was into geography and social studies, anything. But by default, this is into coding mode. What does that mean? That means that if I write about what is DNS, for example, DNS outside of coding could also mean a bunch of things, right? The acronyms might be same, similar. But what we have done over here is that we have pre-programmed this. We have prompt engineered this into believing that whatever you ask, and most of you will ask coding questions only, are coding questions, right? So you can see if I write what is a DNS, it just spits out the information. Then I can ask it like, I want to add an A record or, you know, not even that. Let's say, what is the difference between A record and C name record? So you see the next answer which it will give you is response, follow-up response based upon your last question or your last conversation. And then if you want to even ensure that, you can say, can you change the IP in last A record to one, two, three, four? And that will also be in continuation, right? So you can see it change your example.com a record to 1.2.3.4 instead of 192, 168, 11. So you see all of this conversation is done using this text davinci 003 model. This is performed by OpenAI. This over here is a wrapper which gives, which does two things. The first thing it does is helps you communicate with OpenAI in the first place. You know, it helps you communicate with this API, API instantly. This API which you see over here, this can only be free for so long, right? OpenAI would at some point restrict this would lock this behind certain paywall because this is not free to operate. OpenAI is spending close to $3 million every single day. That's close to $100 million burn a month. So these guys are spending $100 million a month on this particular interface to keep it free, right? Of course, that's not possible at all. That's not feasible. So at some point they will also restrict this, but the API which we use, it's paid already, right? The API is paid from OpenAI. This product right here is free for now. What this does is that it allows you to get instant help because we maintain that particular session with OpenAI ourselves, just like how ChatGPT works. I'm gonna interrupt this and introduce you to a year-end sale on CodeDAM as well, which gives you access to this ChatGPT, first of all, 
This gives you access to all this AI assistant and all this AI tool help which you need. Plus, it gives you access to all the courses on the platform. So you see there are a bunch of new releases, bunch of new courses, all these awesome learning paths, right? So all these learning paths with your progress and your uh, completion rate, all of them locked into it, all of them available into it. You get access to all of this code material. Plus a new thing which we are working on that is get work opportunities directly from CodeDamp. And this is only for people who have been learning on CodeDamp platform, right? So it's not like someone can just come and sign up and, you know, take opportunities from you. If you have been working, if you have been learning vigilantly on CodeDamp for some time, these opportunities belong to you. Alongside this, obviously you get access to full playgrounds area, you get access to complete build projects you have access to forums where you can ask questions you have access to this ai thing where you can ask questions anything at all and currently it's running at a 50 percent for one year membership discount that's the biggest discount that's the huge discount for year end so if you want this discount go to codedam.com slash year end sale upgrade on a 50 percent pro membership this will not last forever this will not last for a lifetime but this is something which you should definitely invest into if you're looking forward to a time where you know over the next one year you want to become a great developer you want to upskill yourself or you just want to start right if you're someone who's just looking from distance about this ai this open ai api things how to implement them how to build your own products like these this is the membership you want anyway coming back to our topic of discussion how instant help works I just told you we use the text DaVinci 003 model, but this model over here is a little expensive. Actually, from the next model, it's actually 10 times more expensive. I'm going to show you how the pricing works for OpenAI. So you can see DaVinci, which is the most powerful model, comes at two cents for a thousand tokens and the next model is 10 times less expensive than DaVinci. That means something is really really getting better over here because you have a 10 times margin right it's not a small thing it's not a small thing at all this thing if you know if you can hold let's say five conversations at a sim sample price with this model you can hold 50 with this and trust me i have tried curie curie is not good for holding conversations right like davinci davinci is something which is which understands context deeper which understands what you want gives you much more rich responses compared to curie that's why we went with davinci and that's why this is also slightly expensive but you see this is based on a token model right so what does this token mean let's take a look at another tool which openai provides you see there's an openai tokenizer which if i switch to gpt3 we thought that we'll use Codex, but Codex is not, I mean, GPT-3 is good enough model for, you know, even for code help as well. Codex is more for, you know, code completion and how GitHub Copilot works. So Codex is something which we will integrate on CodeDAM when we are integrating OpenAI inside of Playgrounds. But for now, GPT-3 is as good as it gets. So let's switch to GPT-3 and let's start asking some questions like how do I calculate prime numbers in JavaScript? So you see over here, you can see how it broke it down, right? It says that this has nine tokens and this token is how, you know, you feed it into the DaVinci engine, text DaVinci engine. And that means if I ask something like this to text DaVinci, whatever response it gives me, let's say if the response it gives me is of 50 tokens or 100 tokens, whatever. So I'll be billed for 109 tokens according to this pricing model. That means if we talk about 109, 100 tokens, it will be 0.2 cents, right? So yeah, that's it. It's it sounds cheap. It's not cheap at all if you are considering long form conversations or, you know, long form things, because the problem happens is that if you want to hold a conversation, you have to give the model the full context of the conversation again. This model in a way is stateless, right? It's like HTTP. It doesn't know what happened before that, before that particular response. So what you have to do in order to, you know, just make the conversations much more richer is give the full history of the response again into the model. That is how it works currently. Maybe this improves, maybe it does not improve. We don't know, but that is how it works currently. And this gets expensive on every single new message also, right? Because let's say if this is the first question and let's say it responds you with some, some response, if you ask next question as, you know, no, no, I meant how do 
I calculate calculate prime numbers only greater than 100. You see, even if you ask this now, you actually have to send the full context, right? You actually end up sending the full context, even if these questions are disconnected or connected in any way, because now the model has to see what did you tell? Then what did I tell? Then what did you tell again? But nonetheless, this is impressive because this works, right? This is impressive because this is super powerful. This works perfectly in a lot of cases and it's actually super smart in a lot of cases right there have been occurrences where gpt3 and this chat gpt also fails to answer questions i have encountered a bunch of them myself from coding related itself but for the most part this works this thing is awesome even though it's slightly expensive which will get cheaper as the you know model gets better as the infrastructure architecture underlying architecture gets better the tech gets better but this is a good future this is a future which can help developers which can help anyone in general not just developers because this model is super super knowledgeable on a lot of topics like it should be so yeah that's pretty much it if you like this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel more of ai content and more of ai courses coming on code Dam real soon real quick it's time to apply for code Dam pro membership if you haven't yet spend your education budget somewhere where it matters right somewhere which will where it will get used good for more subscriptions you have the more subscription amount you have the better your chances to become an awesome developer for the next year and it supports us and supports us releasing new courses new content new features like this new work opportunities for you in a way to make a better future for you that is all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching